Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I want to share with you two different ways to use your watercolor with stencils. Here's a look at the stencils I'm going to be using today. They are all from the Crafters Workshop. I have Floral Statement and a 6x6 Leaf Collection, which I've used before, but in 6x6 this time I'm using 12x12 and Blooming Garden in 12x12. I will have all of the supplies as always linked down below. Now I am starting off with some watercolor paper in an A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And I also need to use some Elmer's Craft Bond rubber cement. You can find this in the kids section or at your local craft store. It's very, very cheap, very, very easy to find. You can find it at Target and Walmart and all those places too. But I love this stuff in my craft room. It's one of my most used masking tools probably besides like post-it notes and things like that that is readily available. Now the watercolor paper I am using is actually scrap watercolor paper. My daughter got a hold of my watercolor pad and decided to color all over it. So I just flipped it over and used the other side and it's a way to save more paper and not have to throw that out. So when you see me flip this over and it's got all those little markings on it, that's my daughter. She likes to get in my craft stuff sometimes and play around and that's okay but the first thing I want to do is go ahead and take some of that rubber cement and put it all over the back of my stencil you can go heavy-handed here if you want we're gonna clean this up later on but you do want to get a nice layer of that on so you can stick it down know it's gonna stick to your paper I went ahead and made sure I knew where I wanted to put this first covered that with a good layer of that rubber cement and then I'll go ahead and place that down right on top of my watercolor paper. This will get a little messy, that's okay. Like I said, we will clean it up. Also, this will not ruin your stencil. You will be able to get this off of there later on. So have at it, put some on, and it will come off later, I promise. Now, I did that with a smaller stencil. With this technique, you can use larger stencils and get a larger pattern on your background and it works just the same. You don't need to put the entire, or you don't have to put rubber cement over the entire stencil. You just wanna lay this out on your paper, figure out what part of the stencil you wanna use. So if you have more of the 12 by 12 stencils in your craft room, this works with that too. You just need to figure out which part you wanna use so you're not wasting a lot of product. So I figured out I wanted to use that large kind of daisy looking flower. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my rubber cement on that portion of my stencil. Again, I'm using a nice thick layer. Mine is a little bit older. I've had this for probably two years. It's time to get a new bottle. So mine's a little bit more gloopy. When you get yours, if you have a new bottle, it should be a little bit, it's not really a runny type of liquid, but it won't be as gloopy as mine. So I had to work with mine a little bit more. Yours should go on a little bit easier. I'm gonna spread that out and make sure that I have all of the parts of my stencil covered. You wanna make sure that you get all of it covered because whatever part is not covered is going to allow water to seep underneath it. It's not gonna keep that nice white background where you want your stencil to be. So make sure you have it covered fully. I'll go ahead and take my stencil now that I have the rubber cement on there and place it on top of my watercolor paper. I'll go ahead and give that a little press. If it's a little messy, that's okay. We'll clean up all those areas in a minute, but we wanna set this aside to dry for a little bit. I set that aside to dry. It does not take long. If you've used rubber cement before, you know it dries in just a snap. So I set mine aside to dry while I did some more things, but when I came back, it was dry and I had those little pieces. It kind of looks like webbing almost in between the stencil. You wanna get all of that out before you bring in your watercolor. You can do this two ways. You can use an adhesive eraser. It's just this rubber square of an eraser and that's going to take off all of the little areas inside your stencil that have that rubber cement webbing or even little gloops of it. If you don't have one of those, that's okay. Just use your finger and rub over it. It might be a little rough on your finger, but it does work and it is a lot faster than your eraser to use. Now anywhere that you leave that in the stencil where it's not supposed to be, the water is not going to penetrate underneath that. So everywhere the rubber cement is, it's gonna resist that watercolor and it's gonna leave a white spot. So make sure you do a good job of not only sticking 
down the stencil onto your paper, but you also want to make sure you do a good job whenever you get all of that extra rubber cement out of your stencil, kind of that webbing and any gloops and things like that, because you'll have white spots. Now, the first one, I'm going to go ahead and use some P.H. Martin's Hydras. I got these on sale at Michael's, I believe it was. Um, they were on clearance, so I went ahead and scooped them up. These are more, I would say, of kind of an ink. I mean, they are a watercolor, but they stain your paper, and they're, I don't know, they're just kind of a different texture. They're really fun to play around with, and they worked beautifully for this technique. Now I practiced this technique before I actually did it on camera, so I had a good idea of my color palette that I wanted to use. I'm using some purples, some hot pinks, some oranges and yellows, and I'm doing just a very, very tiny bit of color mixing. If you are like me and you have color with that, I would highly suggest watching some videos here on YouTube about color mixing and also learning how to use a color wheel. It's helped me a lot in mixing some colors. I am just laying down this color inside the stencils. This is going to look like a hot mess while I put this on. It's going to look terrible, but once I peel off the stencil later on, once it's dried, it will look fabulous, I promise. You want to make sure you're using a brush. You want to use a tinier brush in this case because it's a tinier stencil. You've got smaller spaces you're going into. I'm not using a whole lot of water here. You can if you want to, if you want more of that true watercolor look. And you want to make sure that you go into all of those little tiny crevices and spaces. I would suggest going and doing this once over, just kind of filling in all your spaces. And if you have any parts where you're not quite sure what they go with, fill in all of your stencil first and then come back to those parts later on and fill them in with the color. It will start to kind of look like it's supposed to look so that will help you as you go along fill in those little tiny spaces where you're not sure oh does it go with this flower or does it go with this leaf once you get into it and you start to lay down more and more color you'll be able to see what goes with the wet better so if you have any of those spaces move along and come back later on now I am mixing up some colors here I needed to mix a green and I will go in with all of those little leaves I really didn't switch up colors with my leaves a whole lot I went in with the same green all the way across. There are so many flowers and it's broken up so well in this stencil that I really didn't need to. You can come in with different greens if you want to, to really give it some depth and dimension. You can come in with a ton of different colors if you want to, but I kept mine nice and simple for today. I'm also not going crazy with my color here. So I am keeping it confined to the space it needs to be. I'm not going a whole lot outside the lines. It does get a little bit messy, but this is such a small stencil and the spaces are so small, you really want to keep your color confined to the space it needs to be in. This technique does take a little bit of time too. It's just one of those techniques that you can make quick if you want to, which I'll show you in just a moment. The next technique I did was quicker, but doing a piece like this does take time, but I promise the results are so worth the effort you put into this. There's just a few more pieces here to do, and then I finally did the outside of this with some blue that I mixed up. All the little areas in between where there's no flowers or leaves like that, I went ahead and filled in with a nice uh, blue color that I mixed up. Now this stencil is awesome also because it has that nice center in it where it's going to leave that entire space white, so you have a built-in spot for your sentiments and that kind of thing. I'm making cards today. You can do this on your backgrounds of scrapbook pages, whatever you want to use. But for me, it's going to be a card that I'm making today. There's a closer look at that all finished. Now I need to set this aside to dry. Like I said, it's going to not look that great when I get done. But I promise once I peel the stencil off, it'll look beautiful. Now my next um, page or my next card that I'm going to do here is the same size. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel. But for this one, I'm going to use my Distress Inks as my watercolor. I use a palette that is just a piece of cardstock that is laminated. Very, very simple and easy to do. And I just squish down some of my color on there. And for this one, I'm using more water. And I'm using a water brush. This is going to be a quicker way to get it done. My other card took quite a while to get all that color in. This one took probably 10 minutes to get done. It was super, super quick. 
I'm going a little bit more heavy handed too with the color and also the water whenever you use more water it's going to pull up around the edges more so that is almost like a built-in shading and highlight in your stencil that you don't have to do a whole lot with you can go more in depth with this add darker colors if you want to the darker spots add highlights if you want but really you don't need to you can just drop in that color and let the stencil work for you instead of the other way around I also am using some frayed burlap in the center of that. My other two colors are ripe persimmon and I'm not sure the other color, like I said before, all the products I'm going to be using today will be linked down below in the description box so you can find out certain colors down there. I went ahead and mixed up my own red to kind of match the earthy color palette that I'm going for here and I'm carrying that frayed burlap down into that other flower in the bottom right hand corner. Now for my leaves in this one I'm using some peeled paint and then I'm going to go ahead and carry my frayed burlap up into that other uh, flower on the top right hand corner too as well to kind of even everything out. For my background on this one, all in my white space, I'm going in with some pumice stone, quickly filling in that area, and I'm going to set this guy aside to dry now. Now this one will take a little bit longer to dry, however, with that ink, you almost want to let it dry, or the Dr. P.H. Martins, whatever they are, you need to let this almost dry overnight before you go into your next step. Um, I messed up on my first one, and it smeared everywhere, so you really, these will feel dry to the touch you need to give them some more time to dry. Once everything is dry, you can start to peel up your stencil. Now, this is amazing. It peels right off the paper. Rubber cement isn't really a permanent type of adhesive. It is removable. And then when you peel that up, you've got this gorgeous background. All the edges are nice and white. Everything is very, it just looks like you spent a ton of time hand painting this when really, you used a stencil and slapped on some color. Now to remove all that extra um, rubber cement on there, again, you can use your rubber eraser, your adhesive eraser, or you can use your finger and just go over that very quickly. I set this aside to dry before I got too carried away because if you go in over that, it's gonna smear your color, but you can take that uh, rubber cement off of your stencil right now too and all you need to do with that is just rub your hand over the back of that. It's gonna ball up that rubber cement and your stencil will be like new. You can go wash away the color, you can do whatever you want with it. As a matter of fact, my watercolor stained my um, stencil and the rubber cement didn't hurt at all. Go figure, right? The staining doesn't hurt it though and it works perfectly fine. Now, when I did not give it enough time to dry on my practice run, you can see in this snapshot of how it smeared across the paper. So even though that's gonna feel dry to the touch, let it dry overnight, give yourself that little bit of a break, and just know that everything is gonna go right for you. I finished this card off camera. I went ahead and die cut the word prayers, and it also has a stamp set with that die that goes along with it. Um, so I stamped that on a piece of white cardstock, cut that out into a little rectangle, I glued everything down into the center where that white space is. I added a little bit of glossy accents over the prayers and I added a few little enamel accents. I really wanted to let the background shine on this one. There is a closer look at just how crisp of lines you get just by using rubber cement with your stencils. It is amazing. I love this technique so much. All right, moving on to my next card. I went ahead and did the exact same thing, peeled up the stencil, wiped away the extra rubber cement on that one, and then I used that same prayers um, die cut and stamp set, same exact technique. This one I just did with gold embossing powder, so I covered the die cut with gold embossing powder, and my Nouveau drops on this card were gold too to match everything and really go with that more earth tone color palette that I have going on on this card. This is gorgeous too. This one took a little bit less time. And you've got that built-in shading with just by using that little bit of extra water with your watercolors. So this next technique that I'm gonna share with you, I actually did not plan on it working. I did not plan on it being in the video today, but I love the way it turned out. This is a much more messy technique. It does take a little bit less time, but you do have some drying time with this as well. I am using the leaf stencil. This is in the 12 by 12 form. Um, 
I used this the other day in the 6x6. Six six. Both are great sizes to have, and the, this is going to be my go-to for fall for my stenciling. I already have another technique I want to use with this that will be coming up shortly, so stay tuned for that one. I am placing that center leaf down in the center of an A2 panel. I'm going to go ahead and line that up just by taping it on the front when it's centered, flipping it over, then I can tape everything down to the back and remove that tape on the front. And I'll actually use that tape to go ahead and cover up any little places that maybe the other leaves are that I don't want getting any masking fluid through them. Now for this technique, I am actually using the Incredible White Mask Liquid Frisket. This is just a watercolor masking fluid, so you can use any kind you have. I'm using a makeup sponge. I would actually suggest using a foam brush for this. The makeup sponge just did not soak up enough product for me, and it put too much down, um, to be quite honest. So if you're going to do this technique, use a foam brush. Also, this will work with rubber cement. You don't have to use the liquid frisket. I just had this on hand, and I wanted to see if it worked with this as well. Um, but if you go and you use the rubber cement for the other technique and you have it on hand, you might as well use it for this one. Just whenever you're brushing that on, only brush one way and with this stencil you will want to go side to side instead of up and down. That way everything stays nice and neat and it doesn't get underneath your stencil at all. So I went ahead and popped on some of that liquid frisket right on, over the top of that stencil. Like I said, use a foam brush. Um, instead of the makeup sponge like I'm using here. A little bit did get underneath, that's okay. It's a little bit more of a messy technique. If you want more of a true stencil form, nice and neat, you'll wanna go with the rubber cement or use that foam brush. Now this, again, it's not gonna hurt your stencil. It comes right off, it just rolls up into little balls, kinda like the rubber cement, and it cleans off really easily. You can wait till it dries or you can clean it up while it's wet, either way works. I went ahead and removed that extra tape that was on there and now it's time to start with our background. So I'm doing ink, sm ink smushing. I'm using my distress inks. I've got frayed burlap, um, peeled paint I know, aid, or mahogany. I'm not sure the colors. I'm horrible with names. So again, those will be in the description box down below. I went ahead and put these on a smaller palette. Again, this is just a piece of white cardstock that I've laminated. I wet that and I wet the surface of my background and then I'm just going to smush this down, kind of drag it across. This is where you get to have fun, get a little messy and really it's just about getting that color on there and stopping when you're happy with it. To be honest, I did not like the look of this until it dried. Um, the colors just weren't vibrant enough for me. I really like those vibrant colors and this so let it dry before you throw it out is what I'm saying. <laughs> I went ahead and put some more of that aged mahogany, I believe is what it's called on there. And I'm going to smush that down just where I think it needs those extra colors. I'll clean that up and I'll come back in with some other colors. This is really just about having fun. You can go in with whatever color palette you want to. So you can do this color that I'm doing here. You can go lighter. You can go darker. You could even put in some... Um, once it's done, you could put in perfect pearls, any kind of shiny thing. You could splatter on acrylic paint very thick over this. It really is up to you how far you want to go with this background. I came in with some more peeled paint and then some more frayed burlap. And I thought this card was not going to make it to video because I didn't like it until it dried and then it was gorgeous. I was happy with it. I came back the next day and I went ahead and started removing that liquid frisket. This is something you are going to want to remove with that rubber, rubber eraser, just because it holds the color on top of it. So anytime I've tried to use my finger to remove this, I have smeared color. So you'll wanna go ahead and just rub a little bit and then pick off what you've removed. Rub a little bit away, pick off what you've removed. That way you're not getting any smearing. This is more of a messy finish, I would say, instead of your nice stark outline that you get with that rubber cement. Either way is gorgeous. It's really about what you prefer for what card. But there is a look at that background all ready to go. I finished this card off camera as well. I used the same, same sentiment and all that that I've been using for this entire card. I used the prayers that I heat embossed with 
some uh, copper embossing powder. I use the Thinking of You on some craft card stock that I heat and boss with copper, and I did some flecks of some shimmer that I had in brown, and that finished off the card. It was super easy. Stuck all of these on a card base, and they are ready to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this technique. As always, there are going to be links on the left side of your screen that you can click on, and if you enjoyed this video, you can leave a thumbs up down below as always. And if you aren't subscribed, you can do that over on the left hand side as well. Happy crafting everyone.